Hello, I'm up here, X-Toycat, and one of the most bizarre Minecraft features is the ability to send your realm to basically anyone. And because my username is public, lots of people send me their Minecraft worlds, and some of them are huge and epic, and some of these are just pure eccentricity, such as this month, someone sent me a world where they wrote the Bible exclusively in Minecraft books. Also, there is someone who collected the very same book that they used for snippers, sorry about what happened here, and then there is a castle which is the scale of most people's Minecraft worlds. What is going on with your realms. That's something I like to find out every month in Realm Review, and so welcome to the February edition, and I'm excited to jump into this one today. This first world has a beautiful spawn with a map of the world with labels of what is where, and even these cute little pixel arts to guide you around it. However, it also has a texture pack which not only has these ridiculously tiny hearts, not only has this slightly too realistic vibe for something that looks like this, but also was 138 megabytes to download. You shouldn't need a 138 megabyte texture pack to just make a spider out of furnaces. I like the spider made out of furnaces as an idea, but this isn't the culmination of a beautifully realistic texture pack, in my opinion. Also, I bet they're blast furnaces. Oh no, this is what a regular furnace looks like. Seriously, what is the point of making this beautiful circle furnace here, and then just having two squares at the top and bottom? We defeat ourselves when we try to make Minecraft too realistic. In fact, Minecraft has a beautiful aesthetic. It's called the Minecraft look, and you should always get at least somewhat close to it. I'll leave my rant about realistic texture packs for another time and instead go into this lovely farm that I see. Oh wow, this sure is nice, huh? They've gone for like a barnyard look with a bunch of flowers on the second floor. I would say this is a nice way to store your flowers in one place, but I would also say why do you need to go up a ladder? If the whole point is for storage, then you might as well make it as accessible as possible. I, you can walk in easily, you don't have to use a fresh plate to do so, and you should be able to just see the flowers right then and there and bone meal them up to strength. I also see, looking around the place, there's a lot of these small houses that look like they're villager homes, but then also are not, which is fun, but also a reminder that Minecraft itself has a really nice aesthetic. Like, wouldn't it be nice to take from it and build, like, a mineshaft, for example? I, I, I do think that some of the best builds in Minecraft can take the Minecraft aesthetic to the next level, rather than trying to do something entirely realistic, because the real world is very hard to build out of meter-by-meter meter blocks, as I'm sure any skyscraper uh, builder can tell you. But what I can also say is that in this world, there is a lot of storage. This is someone who's been playing Minecraft a long time. That's something I can also tell from this very, very overdone type of staircase, uh, which leads them into a house in the mountain. I love the idea of a house in the mountain, and I think that this one is a version of that concept. You can definitely say they've got a bedroom, and they've got a, a wheat room, and they've got a chest room, and then they've got a balcony. I mean... It technically is a house, right? That is the uh, the big nice compliment I want to end this world on. But I think after looking at a natural texture pack too long, you just want to see something with some regular Minecraft aesthetics, even when it's a sign that says Lucky Town, where they clearly ran out of space for the N. But that's fine. I'm going to look around this world next and see what it has in store for me. Although there's a lot of zombies that would <laughs> very much uh, like that to be very little. This is a nice bridge, and these are a nice couple of buildings made from blue and orange. Uh, which would you like more? Come to me. He's just joking. Welcome to me. I love this. It's like two guardians. One tells only lies, one tells only truths. Which is which is the way forward? I don't know. All I know is that this is a very lovely beach party, which they've got going on here, and also a caves and cliffs little area. I, it feels as though this is someone who started a long time ago and slowly tries to collect the blocks and features from a given update, something I can fully respect from this copper and mangrove house and uh, this copper staircase that will lead me up to, oh, is that reinforced deep slate? Oh, it's a half creative, half survival world. I think this is one of the weirdest things to do, uh, personally, is to play survival Minecraft, but then go into creative or use cheats to give yourself unobtainable blocks and make a bedrock house or a, a, a chiseled deep slate house. Because at that point, it's like, well, I think you might have uh, more fun just playing full creative. If you think survival is a, you know, constraining game mode, which really limits your fun, make a creative world. You'd have a lot more fun of it because instead of just building, you know, 12 story buildings slowly, you could build many, many more, much taller, much more interesting things. Uh, if you are looking to unleash the maximum creative 
creative potential that Minecraft has, well actually, creative mode is the best way to do that. And are these very, very high walls <laughs> probably aren't helping anyone either. Also, I mean this in the most constructively critical way, but I think the person who submitted this world learned how to build one building and then worked out that they could keep replacing the blocks of other ones and then they could make another building and another one and another one. Uh, however, it looks very strange when you duplicate the exact same building style with nothing else in between. Take notes, American suburbs. Pew, 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 shots fired. Oh, never mind. I found the other type of house. They've also worked out how to build this cherry building using copper grates. So this is also 1.21 experimental. And all they've got is a town made up of... You know, I want to love this world. I really do. I bet there's some beautiful things hidden around here. But so far, it looks as though they built a village, walled it off from the world, removed all the villagers, and then, for some reason, built the exact same thing 20 times over in creative, probably? Oh, that is the weirdest welcome to a realm I've ever received. <laughs> they have a raid running at spawn. Also, look at the rest of this. What is going on? This is the most server-like realm I've ever joined. It's got money, it's got enchanted golden apples. I already spawned with loot, which I only just realized is weird. And there's a weird block looking here at me, which I guess is telling me to read the rules. This is 30 pages of things that we can look through. Oh man, I am not ready for this. <laughs> just a few rules. Watch out for purge weekend. Also respect ourself and don't use ethnic or homophobic slurs. Well, I guess that puts an end to the messages that I was intending to but yeah, I immediately look at this and say, what is going- How do you even begin to look around a world this big? I think the first thing I have to do is logical, and it's to go through that portal right there. It's made of red instead of anything else, and to me that just- it says I need to know what's going on. Oh no, it's not a real portal, it's just red stained glass designed to trick me. Speaking of designed to trick me, what the heck is happening in the background there? So this is obviously not a pure survival world, is my instinct. I have no way to verify or not verify that. But what I can say is since I'm floating around, this is, just, this is so beautifully and insanely built that there's no way to conclude that this is any real terrain that they started with because it's so different right now. The only thing I've seen so far that I truly understand and can comprehend are these wells, but instead of having water, they have carrots, which is fun. And also there's a big Colosseum that I've been walking around for a while now. I'm excited to see what's in the middle. So this is a uh, here Hunger Games guard. Uh, Ender Pearl's not allowed inside. And this is a Hunger Games attendant who tells you to take your seats. And then this is what the Hunger Games looks like. Oh, it's fun. It's a miniature uh, Hunger Games. I love that a lot, actually. There's a there's a mildly concerning vibe to these flags that are around the place, but otherwise, looking real good. Okay, there's clearly no Hunger Games happening right now, and so I'm just going to leave and assume that somewhere else that will all make more sense. But for now, we could also check out what's on top of these mountains. Okay, I wanted to defend it somewhat the first time I saw it, but the fact that every single moss block in this world, by the way, using moss, not grass, every single moss block is covered in either flowers, crystals, cobwebs, or for God's sake, conduits? <laughs> Honestly, it's not even charming anymore. It's just ugly. I don't understand how you could cover an entire world of this and still think, yeah, you know what the rest of the world needs? More of those blocks everywhere. But somehow, that is what ended up happening here. There are some crazy beautiful buildings in the center of this. And there's some huge effort put into this sky that you can see. But everything else just makes me question my sanity. Yeah, I think there are precisely four interesting builds in this world. The Colosseum, the flying ship, this weird citadel-like thing. Oh, someone joined. Hi, toy cats. Hi indeed. I want to ask them so badly about what led to this entire world existing the way that it does. Oh, is it creative and I just didn't know? That would explain so much. Oh, I don't have creative. It's creative for them and I just don't know. But yeah, this is such a bizarrely put together world to then, like, they put so much work into the commands and to this text that's always reading on screen, but I still don't know what's happening. I'm following them around the world, by the way, and even they are having tricky <laughs> difficulties not getting stuck in the cobwebs. Cobwebs is such a bad building block if you're putting them in a level where they can be accessed by people, and I don't understand why there's pathways around the world that only lead to carrot wells, but I'm hoping some of these questions will be answered on my tour. Okay, I apparently have a job now, and I don't know 
<laughs> what the heck? Well, that's gonna do for me. Oh, wow. Okay, so he told me to read the IBX Toy Cat NPC, which looks like this. By the way, that's not my skin. It's kind of sad that you can't actually access my actual skin anymore because, you know, the tail and the 3D geometry. Oh, wait, is that covered by the chest plate and not the legs? Oh, both the chest plate and the legs cover the tail. But yeah, this is this is what my actual cat skin looks like. It's very weird to look at an imposter, but apparently this is, oh, hello, toy cat. Okay, so that was a lot of reading, but it basically comes down to this is a very big world that's designed to be fully explored. This is just the spawn area. So this feels a bit like a Minecraft server because that's what they're going for. You come into the world and you can explore uh, any how you like. And there are different job roles, which are just different perks. And that is what allows you to look around it. But I have to say, I, I, I am flummoxed by this world, but just because it's so different to anything I've experienced. So this was all set up by one person, Red Knight 7567 as basically a giant server that exists as a realm. So you can see the amount of stuff that's been added here in the way that it's all showing. Uh, this is a huge amount of coding basically that's being shown off here and not really a world. So, you know, judging the world by itself is one thing and you know, there's a lot of judgment to be had about carrot wells. Uh, but the world is meant to be more of a server that just exists in Minecraft Bedrock, which is actually incredible when you think about it. I, I don't think it's fair or re really within my remit to judge this, but I do want to follow him to see where it leads me. Okay, this is not what I was expecting to be led to. This is... <sighs> Let's accept the Lord's blessing. Oh. It will give me a perk. Oh, religion is real in this world. I mean, wait. I mean, religion... The Oh, wow. Oh, my God. So, oh, wow. They wrote so much in here. Oh, this this world is such a beefed out law, apparently. That is that is so interesting to see, especially in a world of so much Japanese themed architecture. I uh, and these, <laughs> these shulkers, you can read the Bible. Oh, my God. Why? <laughs> I, I, you know, again, I, I like I'm I, I'm not like a, I, I'm not here to say whether religion does or doesn't have a place in Minecraft. In general, I feel like a lot of people would say it doesn't. But I am here to say that copy-pasting the Bible into Minecraft books is one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen. But almost one of the most worrying at the same time. I... I... I need to ask if the man is a Bible fan, and then we're gonna work out the correct response from there. Because, uh, it's, it's an important Christian... <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, the correct term for what I wanted to ask was Christian. Um, I want I, I gotta tell him it's insane. Okay, he did just acknowledge the clutter all around the world. He acknowledged that that was placed manually and that it is also insane. So I'm glad we at least have something locked in there. The server is also filled with all sorts of weird mini games. Wait, why is there an IBX toy cat there? But the server is also filled with mini games. And so again, isn't really rankable as a survival world. But there's one last thing that Red Knight insists on me looking at, and I don't know what it is. Okay, I've been led around this world for quite some time now, but I am going to learn about the followers of Notch right now. You know, okay, I'm curious, I'm biting. What is this gonna be? Oh, it's a big, big wall of stone, it looks like. Oh, 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 odd. Wait, wait, I know what this is gonna be. I recognize where we are right now. Let's see if I'm right about that, though. Oh, no, wait. I did something I shouldn't have, I think. <laughs> that was not the correct way to go. Wait, I need an entry fee. Oh, I do not understand the Temple of Notch. You put the gold in there. And that's what opens it up. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. So this is definitely what I think it's going to be. Welcome to the Temple of Notch. That's a cute little addition to any world, right? Oh, oh, wow. Wow, Notch does not agree with my being alive. <laughs> wow, that was weird, huh? <laughs> okay, so, you know what? 11 out of 10 for subversion of expectations on the Temple of Notch. And a little closer to 1 out of 10 for all of the terrain around the world. I think that was a fun experience, though. What am I going to see next? I hope uh, the, the floor is going to be less cluttered but we can only find out by jumping in. So the next vault has spawned me into an axolotl chamber, but with a weird water channel. Oh, there is frogs on one side and axolotls on the other, presumably with glass separating them. Oh, it's it's creative. Sorry, my bad. 
To be fair, these are usually copies of the world. So if you ever see me break something, it's not because I am actively trying to hurt people. It's because you can load a backup or you can just use a backup to begin with on the world, as most people do. But welcome to this man's world. Let's read about it. Well, this is not very useful, but there are animatronics, textures and models and beta testers, all of which went into making this. So let's see how well the world actually is made. First things first, this is a rainbow house. I like the- Oh, I see what they're doing here. Oh, I don't like- Okay, so I'm- I'm gonna ignore this for now. Gonna pretend that doesn't exist and focus on the Minecraft builds. I think this is too many lanterns to include in a Minecraft house, personally. I also think the custom painting to make Fredbear's family diner is a bit spooky. And honestly, it's funny because this world looks like it has a lot built in terms of the custom paintings, the animatronics, the, the even the wet floor sign, which for some reason is <laughs> over here. I feel like you could put that anywhere else and it would make more sense. Oh, the water underneath it is something different. How do they do that? Uh, but anyway, I, I feel like the wet floor sign is probably- <laughs> Oh, this is so weird to build out of. Okay, I don't know how you can rank a world effectively when you've got a bull pit that you can hide yourself in. So instead I'll say, what a bizarre experience. Thank you for inviting me, but also what the heck have I just joined? Pro tip, this is not how- If you do have a world which you're building in creative anyway, not everything needs to look exactly like this. The big blocky boxes are great if you're in survival and you just have a couple of blocks. However, when you're in creative, you can get a bit more creative than this. That's all I'm saying. This next world is called Enter Realm Name and oh god, what have I signed myself up for? This is... Okay, we'll, we'll start as optimistically as I can. This first build that I see is a beautiful rendition of what you'll find under the ocean mixed with a pink sheep. If it's not, then it is a random placement of blocks that might as well be made by an AI bot generator. Except if it was done by a bot, at least it would have some sense of composition to it. Just like how, if you look over here, you'll find a beautiful wooden plank house with a nether portal that isn't quite complete in front of it. This is to show that in the same way this nether portal isn't complete, uh, this person's desires go uncompleted and unfulfilled a uh, day-to-day basis, which is very, very sad because they are not a dumb furry, so don't bother asking them about it. I feel like I might be touring a seven-year-old's home right now, and I'm not sure if I feel okay about that. Uh, am I allowed to critique it, or am I meant to just say, good job on crafting glass there, buddy. I like that you've got glass on the inside and the outside of your home. That's very fancy, for sure. Uh, sure there's no furniture. Also, why is there a random lodestone just hanging out in the middle of nowhere? And why is that forest on fire? You know, I'm just gonna- I'm gonna ignore this. This was their first build 12 years ago when they first got Minecraft, and they've since built the rest of the world since then, I can assume. <laughs> I mean, this is clearly a modern art exhibit, right? Uh, Aether Portal will not work. See there, it's a modern art exhibit, very beautiful. And this is also, you know, this church looks pretty nice, I would have to say. A more realistic way to show your faith in Minecraft, I would say, than the entire Bible uh, block by block. Although, you know, at least that world was put together in a way that someone could understand what the purpose was. I look around this and I say, why does it say fur tech? Are they, are they in, in, in the closet furry maybe? Or are they just, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna question it. Okay, I've decided that this is a modern art exhibit because this says fish are on a big area of, Oh, it's fish area! It's a fish area! And these are the things they found while fishing? Nope, they went to- they went entity looting and they did a really good job apparently. Okay, it's far too easy to point out the weird things in this world, so how about instead I try to flip the script and say things that I like. This is a nice chimney, I would say, and that is a nice ledge around the window over there. Um, I really also think it's interesting how there is sugarcane in the distance there. And I like that they have crops that they bothered to replant. I have gone through everything positive I think I can say about this world now, so let's move on to the next one. The next world I have joined is called Noah Friends Fun, and it looks as though they haven't done anything to this world. I could be wrong about that, because I see a cherry grove tree over there, and oh, there's a nether portal right behind the spawn as well. So I guess we're also, there's, wait. <laughs> there's a random pair of netherite leggings floating here, 
and a stone pickaxe and a chest for me, and some raw chicken for some food. So, you know, sometimes people give me a chest filled with some lovely enchanted diamond gear. This person gave me neverite leggings, a broken stone pickaxe, and a raw chicken, so I guess we'll see where that takes me. The answer is to the never, but now that I'm here, I don't know what I'm meant to be doing. Is that is that the way out over there? It's a nice never. I like that it's got some fires in some places. That shows character. It shows that the world's been around long enough to have lots of ghasts come through and actively try to kill you, and good job on surviving that, and even coming out at the other side with some neverite leggings and a raw chicken. Wow, really proud of you. Oh, they've done even better than just Neverite leggings and a raw chicken. They have built themselves a house. Oh, look at this home. It has wooden pillars. That's what you call an A-frame if you're a fancy builder. It's got a little a sneaky entrance hole and it's got windows and even better, there's two big salmon swimming around. Okay, this is actually pretty epic. I, I like this build a lot. This is a really solid start to a world. I don't know why they thought it was in a ready state to share. But I'm glad that I can look around it, I guess. While looking around for other builds to review, I have concluded there is precisely one other, and it's this right here. A pig hole with six pigs inside of it, and then a bed next to six chests and five furnaces. There's gotta be some significance to this I don't understand, but you know what? It technically does the job, and so it is a very nice house. I like it. It's a conceptual house that makes you realize you don't need walls when you've got friends and chests. And so I'm going to move on now now to the next world, not because I've ran out of things in this world, although coincidentally that's happened, but rather because I'm completely satisfied this is the perfect Minecraft world. There's no other way to see it. Speaking of no other way to see it, there's no other way to see something like this world spawn and not think you're in for something strange. As you can see, cobblestone actually looks like cobblestone and a shulker box looks like prismarine. So with this much, oh, it's never right. Okay, you know, I'm always a big believer in that bribes should work because you know, ultimately, don't you want to be bribed by people? And also I'm a big believer in the idea of free food being a good thing. So let's go into the never take the portal to enter the castle, feel free to explore, don't miss the storage warehouse and the farm behind the waterfall and the cove by the docks. Made in pure survival by four friends, let's go. Okay, so I really like how this never works. I don't know if this is intentional design or, or at all, but I love the way that it works until you hit other people's boats, at which point it starts to not be so great. I have never seen this boat trick applied before, by the way, but apparently you can be on stairs just above some blue ice and you'll still get the speed bonus. That feels like it shouldn't work that way, but I love that it does until you hit other people's boats. With that said, let's go through a iron door and see the castle. Or let's go mining in here, huh? They don't want me to, but they can't stop me. You know, actually, I do have to hand it to them. The outside of their never base is actually a really fun looking one. I think this is beautiful. So like every good castle, this castle has some peasants living just outside of it. It's a little closer to a prison than I think most people would like to imagine, but you know, that's totally fine because look at the scale of this thing. Whoa. You know, usually I like to say like, pick a, pick a lane, ch choose a scale and kind of stick to it. Don't be overly ambitious, but it looks as though they have picked a decent level of ambition for the amount of building they want to do here. This is wild. In fact, I'm gonna have to use the Elytra and look at this from above. I sometimes use F1 to get some good B-roll to use for intros and other stuff like that. But like, just look around at this. It's so hard to truly encapsulate how epic the scale of this is, but I'm willing to go inside the castle itself, assuming that we're not just in a big castle right now. I'm guessing these are walls outside the main castle that we can eventually take to get into the real part. Oh no, this is, it's like a giant keep, I guess. With a, with a little roof forest over here and these big turrets from which you could guard the place from any outside mobs. Not that I think they could get in here anyway. This is kind of fun. Oh, so by going down a secret magma shaft, you end up in the actual castle itself. It's kind of hidden down below this place, which I love to see. So this is the court room. You know, love to, love to be courted by various guests and maybe decide on who's going to be in charge of the land. So as you can see, we've got the space for the ghost hunter overseer building operations. Oh, this is more of a, a literal court. If you wanna, 
You want to get your planning permission for a new build put through here? Make sure you speak to these guys. If it's mining related, Ghost Killer's got you. And if it's uh, agriculture and trade related, these two people can share that seat. And then there's a secretary and janitor for Ghost Leader. Man, Ghost Leader, I feel sorry for you. You've got four friends who gave themselves kingly cha you know, chairs in their fantasy uh, situation, but you still have to be a janitor. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. You know, if it makes you feel any better, in year three, I was really excited to star it or like to be a part of my school's play. And uh, I later learned that my role was going to be a tree. And so I stood in the back wearing uh, brown shorts and uh, a green jumper. And that was my tree outfit. And so if you ever feel like you're not truly participating in your friend's activities, just remember they could be making you dress like a tree. So, you know, at least you're a janitor. It could be much better. And that was my school too, by the way. Also, this is an insanely long elevator that takes me down to the storage facility. There's a lot of please read. It's all organized. That's kind of fun that they have like a basement down here that is, oh my God, look at the scale of this thing. Okay, you know what? This is actually pretty cool. But I will have to say, have, <laughs> having having numbering and letters for your storage is a great idea, but keeping your storage this far from your base never actually works in the long run. I mean, maybe, oh yeah, as you can see, <laughs> point proven by the empty chests everywhere. Uh, building this much storage seems like a good idea, but if you're never gonna wanna come down here to access it, then you just actually built a giant chest room, which is nice, but also, you know, it's a little bit brick heavy, right? I like the roof though, I like the roof. Oh, they've got some blue axolotls hanging out here. This world is an interesting reminder to anyone who's making a Minecraft world or really any group collaborative project that although you can build some wonderful things when you work together, there's only so much central planning you can ever really do. A big group of individuals are all going to have their own goals and ideas, and if you try to plan those ideas too much, you're probably going to end up with a world that you mostly make yourself, which might be exactly what you want, but if you really want to work in the spirit of collaboration, you kind of have to give people a little bit of freedom. You can give them some structure, you can give them some, you know, goals uh, if you really want to, but you've also got to accept that some of the best things in Minecraft kind of come spont spontaneously. Uh, and in this world, I think you can see some of the crazy big projects, which are nice to look at by themselves, but some of the small details here and there are also pretty darn nice. And so as I leave this world, I have to say, yeah, it's fine. It's, it's decent, but also uh, it's a little bit overplanned, right? You know, just a reminder, the best Minecraft world we've ever seen with all the sugarcane and all the builds you need uh, probably wasn't planned whatsoever. And so central planning, not good. Just building whatever you want and then giving up after getting one and a half builds in. That is the way you've got to experience your Minecraft worlds. Trust me when I say that. You can also trust me when I say that seven or eight realms for a realm review is the normal amount that we tend to go through. However, in the case of this one, I only have five realm membership invites left. This is something that is usually scrolling off the page. And so rather than leaving five people in the cold, why don't I look at literally every single person that sent me an invite so far? Let's do it. So first things, I don't know how this has happened by the way. There was like 60 when I checked last month, but all of those have vanished. And now we're gonna be checking out friends by the grumpy cow. I've got to say, I don't see any sign of friendship here. I just see a lot of torches and a very beautiful seed. I really wonder which seed this is. In fact, can you see the seed on someone else's world when you join it? Look, there's even a shipwreck in there. Wow, I really need to know. Oh, you can't see the seed on someone else's world. Well, I guess I'll never know the answer to this, but I will be able to say, boy, is this a beautiful world by choice or by design. I don't know which one it is, but look at this cove with a little ship hanging out in it. That ship is intentional, but the rest of this shore isn't. The lush caves, which are generating at surface level, that also seems like a great potential, but I'm not here to do a Seed Sunday on you all as much as I would love to. That series has gone into a little bit of a remission. You know, we've gone a little bit less on that. And so instead we can focus on builds, which we might find in the nether. By the way, the real part of the world seems to be some weird zoo with a phantom attached and also some bats. And also, even more intriguingly, they've got a Zilglin exhibit. So I have to say, in terms of what they've got trapped in the overworld, it's a pretty good sign so far, but we'll see if that stays as we go down. Although I don't know why this is a, a, a block they have. If we go down a little more, we see they have done a lot of mining. Or they found a big cave and they mined it a little bit. But in either case, they've got something very, very strange looking down here. And I'm gonna follow their path to work out what it is. Oh, I think it's just a fossil, actually. 
entrance to the skeleton farm. I don't think I need to go into that, actually. The Never certainly is a place that you could choose to keep your bee farm if you wanted to. It is a choice and they have decided to take it apparently. Another interesting choice they've decided to go with is all of this never quartz and crying obsidian. And honestly, I have a lot of questions about how this all went down, but I think this is at least a nice enough never and a nice enough promise for a future world. It just hasn't got all the sticky nice bits to keep it all together, but ultimately you get to focus on what you care about in Minecraft. And that is what this person certainly has done. Then we've got SJD SMP. Well, this certainly took some time to load into, but I'm excited to see what's happening. And I do not like whenever we spawn and immediately have NPCs, <laughs> but it's nice. Okay, let's see what's happening. Uh, I, you know, I'll just read the small books. There's lots of pages of rules. You cannot talk about alcohol for real life purposes and uh, you shouldn't cyber bully and you shouldn't trick a player into breaking a rule on the server. So, you know, pro tip, keep that in mind. I've got to admit, I do actually like this enclosed spawn area. Usually I think that having a big box to trap people in is kind of not letting them see your world truly. But if you need to have an area to like launch people out to the rest of it, this seems as good an idea as any. It's just, in this particular case, I have no idea how to get out of it. Maybe I'm trapped in the block forever. Yeah, instead of lamenting on it, instead I'll hang out in this Mesa Mushroom biome and just believe that life is good as I move into the next world. There seems to be a lot of SMPs that I get randomly invited to, huh? Oh, I spawned in on a big pillar and was immediately shut off by a skeleton. Wow, is this is this the world? I, you know, I'll take the bed and I'll work out from the- Oh man, this is- this is worse than just the default Minecraft world. It's a default Minecraft world where you spawn in at night. I love that. Oh no, 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 let me sleep first, please. So anyway, the next world is interestingly also an SMP, the Border 500 SMP. Border 500 SMP sounds like it's a index tracking fund more than a Minecraft world. But I'm excited to be proven wrong on that. So usually when you join a world, there's like a bunch of signs telling you something or other. This one says there's a stronghold at 800-800, a never dungeon, <laughs> and uh, warning, don't go in the never, you will die. And you know, I, I can't help but take that as a, oh, there's no never portal. Is this, is this the whole world? Is this the best we got? Why are there barrier blocks here? but not a never portal. I just, I wanna know what their thinking was here. There's not even any trees on this island for me to build a boat to get off it with. And I don't know which direction to go besides that the stronghold is over this direction somewhere. No, it's over this direction. Should we just go over there and find it? This is, this is the worst world I've ever joined. I do not, <laughs> this is by the way, the worst world I've ever joined. It's just, it's just endless ocean. Why would you do this to me? How would you call this an SMP? <laughs> I'm sure they're working on the rest of it. But at least I did find, uh, you know, a structure of some form. I believe that if we could just get ourselves some... No, that's some dirt. I'm going crazy. Speaking of going crazy, we have just one last world to look at. Because there's clearly nothing in this one. Mr. Cheeks Collective Realm, please do not let me down. I've had quite a few of those just now. And I really hope that I'm wrong about this one. But we'll see. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, this by the way, this is an amazing start to a realm. I joined, I see a cherry grove tree, I see a ruined, ruined portal, and I see a flag of a country that I don't think I can really mention uh, on YouTube. It's at least against the terms and service of uh, my, my partnership at agreement with Microsoft. So what I can instead say is, wow, look at the bee that I see floating on the honey, and look at the house which is made of copper. And wow, actually you not, know, this is pretty nice for a collective realm. I like what I'm seeing. I love this almost New York, New York looking skyscraper over there. I'm of course referring to the Las Vegas hotel, not to the city, but I'm, I'm liking a lot of what I see. Yeah, to my mind, this is the type of realm which is actually aspirational for most people. You've got a mega build of some form, but still not the type of like, you know, 80 hour project that you usually would see, but instead something that you could realistically do within a week of intensive play. Um, and then you've got also looking around the place stuff like giant blocks and things that would take a few hours here or there, a bit of planning, and would be very satisfying to pull off, especially if you could work them into something else that you see. I like this a lot. There's tiny bits of history hidden around the place, such as the exact boat, the SS Secret Sniffer Finder, uh, which someone knew- oh, I'm sorry. This is, you know, I. this is why people need backups of their worlds. There are too many creepers hanging around these days, and uh, what they're also hanging around these days is this giant thing which says, 
Uh, chop tree. <laughs> I'm guessing that's their wood farm. I really like that they used um, blue and red wood with this mangrove root in front of it. I feel like mangrove roots are a block that most people struggle to work with, but this is actually a really cool version of that, personally. I, I do think so. And this mushroom house is extra great. It's not just a mushroom, it's a mushroom with hearts on it, and it's blushing as well. Wow, I, I, I like this a lot. Working mud bricks or mushroom blocks into a build can be really hard, but I see this is a fine way to do that. I mean, I would say fine way to do it. I wouldn't say it's great. It's not the best thing you've ever seen, but they're acceptable, right? And acceptable is pretty good when you're working with terrible blocks. Something I recommend. If you're ever worried about not producing the best thing ever, just aim to produce something that's vaguely okay, and you can say you succeeded with your objective. You can also say that if you want to build every mob in Minecraft, that's an objective worth going for as well. This is a fun Minecraft world. None of the builds connect to each other in any meaningful way. Why are there mobs over here and a lighthouse over here and a giant skyscraper there while having a very large family home here? What is the scale of this neighborhood? It doesn't make any sense together, but sometimes that's okay. I mean, this isn't one of those times, but we can believe that it is. And uh, if you want to believe, then make sure uh, that you subscribe to the channel because this has been Realm Review. I have now gone through every single world that people have sent me. It's a pretty good feeling, I have to say. And I'm looking forward to checking out some that you'll send me over the next month. If you want to share a world with me, send in a world, put Toycat2024 somewhere in the title and invite Toycat, that is my Xbox Live game attack slash my Minecraft account name. I think they call it a Microsoft account account these days to get around the fact that you have to log into your Xbox Gamertag on a PlayStation or would have to otherwise. So yeah, my Microsoft account is Toycat. Send me an invite to your world. I would love to look at it and I probably won't be critical of everything inside. I went into this one today thinking there'd be a lot of questionable builds and yeah, there sure have been like this blue build or like this thing here. But there's also been some real inspiration and that's one of my favorite parts of checking these worlds out. I hope you've been inspired and if you haven't, then you get a refund at the end of this video because Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.